I love this guy. I love the chats. He dropped an incredible Silence of the Lambs reference on N on NFL Network this past week. And um, he's Kyle Brandt of Good Morning Football and the host of 10 Questions with Kyle Brandt, his podcast on Spotify and The Ringer. How are you, brother? Buffalo Bill is hot right now, Rich, as are the Buffalo Bills. Well, it's all coming together. You know, again, um, so let's just start with this. Chris, did you, did you see Kyle Brandt's Silence of the Lambs reference. I did not. Okay, because now, look, um, there's many different ways one can go with Silence yeah. of the Lambs. The phrase I use all the time is you covet what you covet see what every you see. day. Yes. Right. Right, right, right. You could also Buffalo, go fava right. beans, nice Chianti. I mean, mm -hmm. there's many, many different ways you can right. go. He, <laughs> I'll give you the floor. What did you, please, please tell me. Oh, please yeah, tell right, me, me I, remember, okay. uh, I can't do it as just as well as you. So Go, we were doing, you know, it, it was Patriots versus Raiders. And we were doing, you know, we do a recurring segment where we impersonate head coaches. And I do a John Gruden and I do a Belichick. So since they were playing, we, we, we did a whole segment of me doing Belichick and Gruden. And the question was uh, something about who would have the better trick plays. And so I come out and Nate and Peter debate. And then I come out and I said, you know, I'm going to reference the tuck rule because this is Raiders <laughs> Patriots. And then I said, you know, the only, only, uh, the only trick play to Belichick, no, man, the only trick play I've seen is in that Silence of the Lambs flick. They got this, this tatted up muchacho and he's dancing and all of a sudden, bam changes things up on you man real fast that's the only tuck rule i know man the <laughs> silence of the lambs man and they said, so we're just freaking wow. out and going off and then they tweeted out and everybody's laughing and it came out of nowhere i didn't even know i was going to do it it just came out dude i mean that was next i think wow. i even tweeted at buffalo you next oh level stuff <laughs> The Buffalo Bill dance. The Buffalo yeah, Bill Tuck rule. You know, Rich, you, as oh you know, being a, a, the founding father of the network, there's, there's certain things you can go to, and there's yep. a limit, and there's a line. And I think uh, in the Sounds of the Lambs world, multiple MIGs, uh, the next sell down yes. from uh, Hannibal yep. Lecter would have been over the line. Yep. But uh, the, the basement of, of Mr. James Gum, a.k.a. Buffalo Bill, was as far as I could go. And when I'm in Gruden mode, anything just comes out. I think you were encroachment uh, in the neutral zone <laughs> uh, um, on that reference. I'm, I'm just wondering, <laughs> there were no flags on the field, right? There were no flags in the field. No flags. Uh, okay, maybe good. a review. For all I know, uh, maybe a review, and they went under the hood, but no flags and no fines, so I'm good. Oh, okay, Kyle, look, man, yep. your coach of your Bears yep. has got some brass cojones. I know. Ten and a half quarters and out, despite a 2-0 and record. That I did not see coming. That Trubisky would have, I mean, if you told me that there would be a ten and a half quarter leash, I would have believed, but at 2-0... and on the road, um, but it is Foles' gig now. What are your two cents on that one, Kyle? It's, it, I think you put it perfectly. Matt Nagy, who, as we know, was coach of the year not long ago, he's the guy at the table who he's, does the Kenny Rogers. He knows when to hold him, knows when to fold him. Let's not forget, earlier in the season, they were way down, way down to Detroit. And already it's like, we'll get Foles in. Trubisky doesn't have it. He said, nope, I'm going to hold him. I'm going to hold. And sure enough, Trubisky launches this crazy comeback, and he wins. This time, he just goes with his guts. I'm folding. I'm walking away. And thereby ending, I think, the Mitch Trubisky era in Chicago. It's an unbelievable thing. You know, Matt, Matt Nagy's deal is just is BU. That's his brand. That's yep. his slogan. It's on his play card. It's on his, in his office. He just felt it. He said, I, don't, I know I stood with him last time and we had to come back, but I'm going to go with my gut. That's why they pay me the big bucks. It is kind of a, a closure in, for, for Chicago fans, for Bears fans, I was, uh, I was asked by a friend on a text, how do you feel about moving on from Mitch? And it, it, do, you, do you feel any sense of loss? And I said, listen, we've done everything we could to save the relationship. We went to therapy. We saw a counselor with Mitch. We had the little puppets that you bring out, and you do the role playing with Mitch to try to express your feelings. We tried every single thing we could do, yes. and we couldn't save the relationship. And now we moved on with this guy who's got a Super Bowl ring and a statue, and it's pretty cool. Well, I'm hoping it works out, Kyle. Yeah. Um, and that the Foles that shows up is, in fact, the Foles that we saw for the last um, quarter and a half of that game. Um, and the Foles that uh, Philadelphia enjoyed and potentially right now will be missing for the rest of 2020. Um, but that said, if it was just 10 and a half quarters, if that mm -hmm. was the leash – that the coach was going to give and that the ten and a half quarters is all that you wanted to preserve. 
mm -hmm. for Trubisky to work out and that the leash was, in fact, that short, mm -hmm. then the whole concept of we can't bring in somebody who is so obviously going to supplant Mitch, not just push, mm -hmm. not just be competitive when there's a competition that, as we all know, COVID prevented from happening in the non-playing season. But if this was just 10 and a half quarters, I can't help but sit here and think what Cam would have looked like. I know. The 2015 Cam that's shown up in 2020 New England, if that guy was in Chicago, you might be set for a decade, if not even for 2020 uh, in a, the same way that New England is, I Kyle. Know. You know? The Cam question and the way you pose it, Rich, is perfect, and you've posed it this whole season the last few weeks, really, is it could be the story of the season. And it, because if they go to the playoffs, if they knock around the Bills and win the East, who knows? I mean, we're conceivably talking now that Patriots could go to a Super Bowl, which is not just wouldn't be sports history. It'd be American history. It's, it's as if Phil Jackson moved on from Jordan and Kobe and just found some guy who everybody gave up on and went to the finals and won it. It's, it's looked that good. It's been that impressive. Um, and that's, listen, the Bears, of course. Yeah, and maybe they did look at Cam. But so did about 20 other teams. I'm still not even sure why he's not on the Panthers. <laughs> but, but it is incredible. It's the biggest shock of the first three weeks of the season has been how good Cam Newton has looked. I know. And, uh, and, and the fact is, is that if the Patriots do, in fact, go to the Super Bowl or make a Super Bowl mm -hmm. run, uh, every single team that had a shot at Cam and let him sit at home until Belichick decided to get through his evaluation of Jared Stidham you know, and the fact that we're sitting here in the first post Tom Brady season with Brady reunited with Gronk mm -hmm. in Tampa, talking about the story of the season being Cam, um, just shows you exactly how wrong everybody else was and how they should all rue the day potentially or could well, wind up ruining the day in maybe, 2020. There is one team, though that made a major quarterback change and is not ruining the day, and that is Tampa itself. And l let's not pretend that Belichick is, is now just winning this battle and that Tampa Bay is uh, they're falling apart, it's not working. No, like they're, they're getting on track. They're, they're getting sharper, and Gronk's getting involved, and they've gone through their little preseason now. Can we even imagine, oh boy. Rich, a Super Bowl yep. – which is the New England Patriots versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. I mean, everybody's head would explode. It'd be the greatest storyline in NFL history. It would double the ratings of last night's debate. I'll tell you that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that oh, would... By the way, yes. you, Rich, I'd ask you, as, as, as a broadcaster yes. and a host, do you find yourself empathizing with Chris Wallace or saying, get in the game, Wallace, or hit the buzzer or hit something? That was some theater last night. I can't imagine how tall his glass of whiskey was after that. Well, I guess, you know, I'll say this. Uh, Chris Wallace, uh, last night, um, the position he was in and the way that he was responding mm -hmm. did sound like me taking away my children's iPad, you know? <laughs> It's what it sounded like at times where, where it would be like we made an agreement. You agreed that when your time was up with your iPad, you yep. were going to give it back to me without any sort of complaint. And then also, hey, look, um, you're going to like what mom and dad haven't planned for you if you give up your iPad right now. You're going to love <laughs> this next thing we have for you. Give up your iPad. Literally, that's what happened last night. It my was wife very and I, parental, and just in my house, the, the children was. weren't listening. I think he was this close to counting. I'm going to count to three, that's Mr. Right. President. One, One two, two. That's a, we're a big counting house, and that was really <laughs> the only trick he had left in the bag. I, I just uh, and say what you want about the guys on stage. There was amazing theater with Wallace, and you're right. He should have taken the iPads away <laughs> yes. and then promised that you know you'll give them back either the Amazon Kindle or the your phone, whatever it is, and maybe one of them stops talking. But my gosh, Kyle Brand here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. It's a bye week for your pod this week. Your yeah, bye week. Uh, Spotify mandated bye week in okay. which we uh, right. remember when we used to watch Rich. You'd watch a uh, Lost or sometimes even Game of Thrones, and out of, of nowhere, yes. they would say, "Oh, no new episode this week, but we're going to give an episode that's going to catch you up if you haven't oh, watched the dude, last several." And it was my always children, a pain in the ass, but my, that is where we're at for ten questions on Spotify. Many more episodes to come. This is the bye okay. week, okay. Uh, so we will not release a new episode. However, I have some work to do tonight, Rich. I'm interested in your thoughts on this. Okay. Tomorrow on yes. Good Morning Football, I have yes. a big, big interview that I'm doing solo 
we uh, are in business, the NFL now, with ACDC, who is releasing a new album and a new song. And at 6 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, I have to interview Brian Johnson and Angus Young oh. from ACDC. One of them is in Australia. One of them is in London. Yes. And I'll be in my basement. Okay. And i got to ask them about you. You shook me all night long and all that stuff. Where should I go with this thing? Um, I guess wow. I don't know. You can have a poll question. Who's got yeah. the biggest balls of them all in the NFL? Yeah. <laughs> you could do that. Uh, that's right. It's Buffalo Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's got all sorts of delay, uh, satellite delay issues potentially written all over that. It does. And it's it's this here's here's and here's the pitfalls. And you would okay. totally get this. You yes. got the satellite delay issues, you've yes. got wildly different time zones, you've got guys with crazy accents, and you're you're interviewing two of them, so you have to serve them up separately. Oh, and wow. if you just throw a question to the group, they don't know who's gonna go. It could be a fine mess. But I'm hoping we can just talk back and black and thunderstruck, and they'll go after it. But I've never met the gentleman. One of them's in their 70s, and they're still rocking and rolling. There you go. <laughs> well, well hey. listen, if you've got issues with two guys in their 70s and how to ask questions and conduct an interview, you should call Chris Wallace, not me. I'll call Chris Wallace. I hope is passed out, hungover, face down in the gutter right now. My 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 heart goes out to you, Chris Wallace. Somebody has to get that guy a taser or a, a blow dart or something next time because we got a bunch of debates to go. Ask uh, Kyle Brandt our poll question. Yeah, we day. got Chris Brock. Okay, uh, Kyle Brandt. Today is the anniversary of the debut of Cheers, Cheers. in 1982. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Okay, sure. Uh, which show thrived the most after replacing a main character? Of course, Shelley Long departed for Kirstie yep. Alley. Cheers, MASH, Two and a Half Men, NYPD Blue. Okay. Uh, I'm taking Two and a Half Men off. I like Ashton as much as the next guy. I didn't log a lot of time with MASH, although I know I'm familiar with Hot Licks Houlihan. Um, NYPD Blue, uh, you're talking Schroeder and uh, it, it, the kid from Saved by the Bell, I think. But, uh, never mind. These are all yes. also ran. I'm going with Cheers. I celebrate Kirstie Alley. I thought she was fantastic in that show. She easily could have fallen on her face, and the show could have fallen apart. I thought she held her own. And as long as as Clavin and Norm are sitting up at the at the bar doing the heavy lifting, that show was going to fly. And I think it's Cheers in a Runaway, the place where everybody, everybody knows, knows your name. And I thought that it's Cheers too because it wasn't just that Shelley Long replaced; it was Coach who passed away in the middle, yeah. and, they, and you know, and then Woody Harrelson coming in. I mean, my gosh. They did it twice. There is a there. What show would you? There is a show that I would put on there. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering if you have another show that m might have been missed right there. The the one for me would be Three's Company. You know. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Suzanne Summers. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Mr. Furley. Mr. Oh. Furley. <laughs> I mean, you, you got no, Norman fell. Norman fell out. Don yep. Knotts in. I mean, that's significant. Right that there. is, that, Mr. That Roper. Is like a, a, you know, it's it's Nick Foles replacing Trubisky. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately skyrocket the level of play. I think you're right <laughs> that Mr. Roper out, Mr. Furley in is in fact the television sitcom version of uh, Foles for Trubisky. I don't th yes. I don't think you're far off right there. Yes, and everybody's eyes go to Khalil Mack, who I think would be the Larry of Three's Company, who I think stole every scene <laughs> yes, he was in with his wardrobe alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. See, Brockman, you're, this is beyond you, yeah, right? You never, did you never see Three's Company? Come never? Knock on my door. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of it. I, I know who's on it. I never watched Suzanne it. Suzanne Summers. Yeah, I mean, the opening credits alone, there's just, you know, those credits back then, they would go on for like 26 minutes. Yes. They're long, and, and they're on they're, uh, they're on a merry-go-round, and there's hijinks, and there's... Hijinks. <laughs> it goes hijinks on for, and the jingle word. is just, as the kids would say, a banger. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Kyle, yeah. uh, so who's next? Do you have next week already in the shoot here, or what for your pod? We you have we have three that we're setting up for the got? next several days. Um, in fact, the one that we have confirmed for next week, something I'm actually really looking forward to, and a person who's living an incredible life, Mr. Donnie Wahlberg, hey, who is a movie star, a TV star, still sells out arenas with the New Kids, mm -hmm. and is married to Jenny McCarthy, and uh, lost 45 pounds to be in the Sixth Sense in the first scene, and I have so many questions about it. Okay, very good. Um, and my, my kids would be, you know, would love uh, um, any mass Singer question that you could come up oh, with. Oh, yeah, yeah, Rich, that's the thing, too, right, because I don't watch that before, but Jenny is on the mass Singer. Oh, very much so. And I've seen Gronk on there, and Antonio oh, Brown was on. Who is, who's who been the coolest one when they take the mask off that you've seen or the eyes and children? I, I, it has been um, just nothing but uh, my thing that I really have enjoyed. Yeah. 
is again, my children are so on the edge of their seat to see who's unmasked and they don't know any of them, mm -hmm. any of them. Literally, there it's lot like it, my daughter came in last week and told me that somebody named Rhymes just got <laughs> unmasked, and I went literally, you know, Leanne, no, I even went Shonda, I even went Shonda, uh, yeah. no, and then the answer was Busta. So, uh, and I just, I just wanted to give her a hug because she had no idea who any of them were, but it's still delighted. It's oh, still delighted. Fantastic. Okay, and, well, and, then I know that. Uh, Maybe I'll ask about Busta Rhymes. And I I, asked, I would have guessed Leanne, too. <laughs> Wildly different person from Busta, <laughs> not related. No doubt. No. Uh, Kyle, as, uh, what do you got over there, Chris? Well, Rich, you have this thing with your kids about if one of the Obamas shows that's up true. or yep. LeBron James, that you'll give them $100. Yes, that's, yeah. that is true because they think uh, it's the most famous person in the world who's about to be unmasked every time. <laughs> and I have told them it is not going to be. And they said, what will you give us if it is LeBron uh -huh. or Beyonce? It's any Obama, name an Obama, Beyonce okay. or LeBron. If it's any of them, they, each child gets a crisp $100 bill from dad. Oh my gosh! So even if it's it's Sasha or Malia, Malia Obama? that's correct. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> any <laughs> Obama, any Obama, or okay, I think you're safe. or Beyonce or LeBron, a crisp one hundred dollar bill. And safe. the other thing that they get most uh, disappointed about, I guess, to bring this full yeah. circle, is the episode where there is no unmasking, but they catch everybody up with highlights from previous episodes. <laughs> oh yeah. They that. do not like that version of the Masked Singer. Previously seen on the Mask Singer. So, I, Rich, I would only ask: Has the Mask Singer taken the the, <clears throat> the baton in your household away from Ultimate Task? <laughs> I know that was hot for a while. Let's play some tag. Let's play some tag. It is, in fact, filling the void of the okay. off season of Ultimate Tag. Okay. Yes, but they I were got it. they're very um, excited. They're very excited I'm to see all three. That, they were I very excited to see on. all. They, they've really never cared about Texans and Steelers before in their entire life, but for them yes. to see all three Watt brothers together. For the first time since the last episode of Ultimate Tag, delighted my children. Yeah, it really can, did. Can I can I share just very quickly? Please. I know we're wrapping up. Uh, something sure. I learned about Derek Watt this sure. week. Okay. I asked aloud on Good Morning Football during the highlight. You know, as you're always just chatting during the highlight and trying to make jokes. I said, if it's JJ and TJ, yes. Why doesn't Derek go by DJ? I because asked I him that too. And his middle name is John. Right. Yeah. I know. And I asked the question. And Steelers and Chargers fans started tweeting me, and there's, it's a ridiculous reason, but it's a really funny one. Um, I'm not making this up. He's on record, Derek Watt is saying this, that he's not DJ because growing up he watched a lot of Full House, and to him DJ Tanner, played by Candace Cameron, that was the DJ. So he's like, that's the little sister's name. I don't want to be DJ. That's the only reason, and, that, and that's his words. How weird is that? I <laughs> asked him the same question in uh -huh. a in a – three watt zoom okay. in advance of the first episode of ultimate tag and he said he just was a kid and just wanted to be different from his brothers mm. so what's up with that i feel Ooh. like i feel like tommy lee jones dr. In the future lied to me. i need to see dr nichols here he <laughs> lied to me what's up bring him in what? You, sw you, you switched the sample, Watt. I <laughs> falsified your research so Devlin McGregor could bring you Provacic. Exactly. <laughs> Pro By the way, just to bring this full, full story, this is the greatest Jewish goodbye with, uh, with Kyle yeah, I mean, ever. Yeah, seriously. Uh, we had Jane Lynch on yesterday, and I spent the first three minutes of my time with her about the uh, fugitive and God how bless you. she helped her uh she she helped um richard kimball um, what did she say about the experience she said it was amazing and that uh harrison ford did not like the script of their scene and he worked on it with her together oh, that's so cool that's what he that's what she said and then oh, was got awesome. and then got freaked out at how i was totally geeking out on the fugitive with her yeah, i think it's I, one of my I favorite movies her. ever it's a great chicago movie all right, you take care of yourself, Kyle. We'll see you on Good Morning Football, 7 a.m. Uh, next week, back uh, with uh, 7 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and we'll see you back next week on your pod with Donnie Wahlberg as it drops every Wednesday. Thanks for the Can't call. Can't wait, Rich. Appreciate it, man. Right back at you. Kyle Brandt, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.